Good morning. It is Thursday. It's the 4th of January. Happy New Year. So, have you seen Prince Andrew? God. So, numerous court documents identifying associates of notorious sex offender Jeffrey Epstein were made public last night. Uh, some of the high profile names in the court documents include Prince Andrew, the former US President, Bill Clinton, Michael Jackson, and David Copperfield. I don't know who that is. Uh, these associates, just unsealed names, were obtained in court documents filed as part of Epstein accuser Virginia Dufres' lawsuit against Ghislaine Maxwell. The British socialite was convicted in December 2021 of sex trafficking and similar charges for procuring teen girls for disgraced financier Epstein and herself. I didn't know this, by the way, um, until today, Ghislaine was bisexual prior to the unsealing the names were listed in court papers as variants of john or jane does many of the names are people who had been publicly identified as epstein associates prior to this unsealing the inclusion of a name in this list does not mean that said associate has been accused of wrongdoing in relation to epstein among the names are people mentioned in passing at legal proceedings Okay. <laughs> in a deposition, Maxwell appears to say that Prince Andrew visited Epstein's island in the US Virgin Islands. Epstein has been accused of abusing numerous girls on this island. When asked how many times Andrew visited, Maxwell said, I can only remember once. When asked if there were any girls on the island at the time, Maxwell insisted there were no girls on the island at all, no girls, no women, other than the staff who worked at the house. One document included a deposition given by Joanna Schoberg, whom Maxwell allegedly recruited for the purposes of performing sex acts on Epstein. Schoberg said in her deposition that Epstein said one time that Clinton likes them young, referring to girls. Christ. In 2019, Clinton's spokesperson denied claims made about Clinton's involvement with Epstein and wrote in a statement on Twitter that President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to in Florida some years ago or those with which he has been recently charged in New York. Clinton notably had a 18 month long affair with Monica Lewinsky, his then 22 year old intern, during his first term as president. He was 49 years old. Dirty old dog. Joe Berg also said that the late musician Michael Jackson was at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion and that she met the famed magician David Copperfield. Did you ever meet anybody famous when you were with Jeffrey? She was asked. I met Michael Jackson at Epstein's house in Palm Beach, she said. Asked whether she uh, massaged Jackson, Schoberg said, I did not know because Mr. Jackson liked young boys. <gasps> uh, as for Copperfield, uh, Schoberg said that he attended dinner at one of Epstein's homes and he did some magic tricks. Did David Copperfield ever discuss Jeffrey's involvement with young girls with you? She was also asked. He questioned me if I was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls. Copperfield, she said in the deposition, didn't tell her any specifics of that question. Did he say whether they were teenagers or anything along those lines? She was also asked. He did not, she said. Donald Trump, whose association with Epstein has been widely reported, was also mentioned in the documents the former US president is not accused of wrongdoing. In Joburg's deposition, she said that they went to one of Trump's casinos in Atlantic City when a storm prevented Epstein's plane from landing in New York. Asked at one point whether she ever gave Trump a massage, Schoberg said no. The deposition also includes Schoberg's account of allegedly meeting Prince Andrew at Epstein's New York home. Ghislaine asked me to come to a closet. She just said, come with me. We went to a closet and grabbed the puppet, the puppet of Prince Andrew. I knew it was Prince Andrew because I had recognised him as a person. I didn't know who he was and so when I saw the tag that said Prince Andrew, then it clicked. I'm like, that's who he is. 
Joburg and Maxwell then returned to the living room with the puppet. I just remembered someone suggesting a photo and they told us to go onto the couch. And so Andrew and Virginia sat on the couch and they put the puppet, the puppet on her lap, Joburg recalled. And so then I sat on Andrew's lap and I believe on my own volition and they took the puppet's hand and put it on Virginia's breast and so Andrew put his on mine. Joburg said she went to bed shortly thereafter. Did you hear Ghislaine Maxwell tell Virginia to do anything while you were in that room? She was asked. Joburg replied, no. Jufre, who claimed that Epstein and Maxwell forced her into a sexual encounter with Britain's Prince Andrew at the age of 17, had sued the publishing heiress, uh, Maxwell, for defamation after claiming the accuser lied. Dufre settled her lawsuit against Maxwell in 2017. In 2021, uh, Dufre sued Prince Andrew over the alleged sexual abuse. The suit settled in early 2022. Andrew has always strenuously denied any wrongdoing. As part of the settlement, he agreed to donate to Dufresne's Victims' Rights Charity. The document's release is among several tranches of filings in Dufresne's civil case that were unsealed following the Miami Herald's year-long effort to make them public. Dufresne did not make allegations of wrongdoing against Clinton. For some reason, I must point that out. <laughs> In one set of documents released in July 2020, Jufre claimed that Maxwell participated in Epstein's sexual abuse of teenage girls. These documents were released several weeks after Maxwell's arrest for her involvement in Epstein's sex trafficking. Jufre claimed that Maxwell lured her into Epstein's perverse uh, orbit under the false pretense of work as a professional masseuse. Instead, Dufre claimed Maxwell trained me as a sex slave, according to a filing in that set of unreleased court papers. The documents released in July 2020 also provided insight into Maxwell and Epstein's relationship. In a January 2015 email exchange, Epstein told Maxwell, you've done nothing wrong and I would urge you to start acting like it. Go outside, head high, not as an escaping victim, go to parties, deal with it. <laughs> a large collection of documents uh, in Dufresne's civil case were also unsealed in August 2019. Those papers included accusations since denied that global leaders were participants in Epstein's trafficking ring. Epstein was arrested on the 6th of July 2019 for sex trafficking. He was found dead in his prison cell on the 10th of August of that year. Authorities determined that he hung himself. Maxwell was sentenced in June 2022 to 20 years imprisonment. She has maintained her innocence and is appealing her conviction. Asked for comments on the documents unsealing, Maxwell's attorney said... Ghislaine Maxwell took no position on the court's recent decision to unseal documents in Dufre versus Maxwell as these disclosures have no bearing on her or her pending appeal. NHS bosses have made more than 20 requests for striking junior doctors in England to be allowed to cross the picket line to help out services. Hmm. None of the requests made on the first strike day have been granted so far by the British Medical Association. The union accused NHS bosses of misusing the system known as derogation and bowing to political pressure to undermine the strike. But NHS England has said they were genuine requests for help. It said the health service was under huge pressure after the six-day walkout began yesterday, Wednesday, and NHS bosses were trying everything they could to protect patients and keep struggling services safe. The requests are made by individual departments, so some NHS trusts are thought to have made more than one request. Only one request is under active consideration. Most involve emergency care areas such as A&E units. Uh, this is the ninth walkout and longest ever by junior doctors and before this stoppage 
only a handful of requests had been made. Just one was granted to Somerset's Western General Hospital in April and that was only done temporarily as the BMA said it was misled about the scale of the problem. Hero couple saved a stranded three-year-old girl and her mother as their car sank into a swollen river amid Storm Henk. <laughs> You're not going to be able to open that door because the pressure's going to have to get out the window. Hello? The, 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 yeah, the, so they're, they're going under the bridge, they're stuck, the car's about to sink under the bridge. Uh, how many of you? Two. A three year old and a mom. Oh, it's, it's going to fall under the bridge, it's our, our whole mill bridge. Go back off the bridge. Christ, that's not what you want to see. Liam Stitch and his partner Tia Draper were out for a walk in Hall Green, Birmingham, when they saw a Fiat Punto sinking into a torrent. Quick thinking, Mr. Stinch, a roads work engineer, climbed into the bridge and pulled the child out of the vehicle. He handed the child to Miss Draper, who is five months pregnant, before rescuing the mother and securing the car to the bridge to stop it from sinking. Uh, Mr Stinch, speaking to the BBC, described himself as a human being with good instincts, but insisted that he was no hero. Aww. At Storm Hank, the eighth of the storm season battered the UK on Tuesday, bringing 94 mile per hour winds and heavy rain to large parts of the UK. Several major roads were closed due to flooding, some train lines were blocked by fallen trees and hundreds of flood alerts and warnings were issued across England, Scotland and Wales. More bad weather is expected later this week with the Met Office issuing a yellow weather warning for rain covering the entire south of England from midday today until 3am uh, tomorrow morning. Oh. <sighs> Former Postal Minister Ed Davey has broken his silence on the Horizon scandal, saying he regrets not asking tough questions. Speaking to LBC, Mr Davey said he should have done more as Postal Affairs Minister to prevent the Horizon scandal. He said ministers from all political parties had been misled by post office officials. Cheeky cheeky. It is a national scandal that has been going on for 20 years and now the Conservatives really need to sort this out and give a proper compensation. Mr Davey said, I was Postal Affairs Minister for two years, I did see Mr Bates and I regret not having asked the post office managers even tough questions. I did, I obviously raised it with them but I think that they have misled minister over minister across all political parties. Over 700 post office branch managers were given criminal convictions after faulty Fujitsu accounting software Horizon made it look as if money was missing. Sub post masters quickly realised unexplainable discrepancies in their records but the post office dismissed concerns as no one else was experiencing such issues. Well clearly they were liar liar. Soon the post office accused the sub postmasters of taking the missing finances for themselves and started criminal proceedings. Asswipes. One sub postmaster from Wales, Alan Bates, and five others from JFSA, Justice for Sub Postmasters Alliance, uh, took the post office to court on behalf of 555 claimants. In 2019, the High Court ruled that the software contained bugs, errors, and defects with material risk which caused shortfalls in the post office branch accounts. The post office was ordered to pay £58 million in compensation for the false prosecutions. It has since been called the most widespread miscarriage of justice in UK history. The scandal is now being turned into a TV drama called Mr Bates vs the Post Office which delves into some of those wronged who then cleared their names. Some of them couldn't bless them. 
Donald Trump has asked the US Supreme Court to reverse a Colorado ruling that barred him from running for president in that state. Good. Colorado's top court said last month Mr. Trump was not an eligible candidate as it said he had engaged in insurrection over the US Capitol riot. His appeal comes a day after he challenged a similar decision by Maine. Dozens of lawsuits have been filed in multiple states seeking to disqualify Mr. Trump from the November 2024 ballot. Courts in Minnesota and Michigan have dismissed similar efforts to disqualify the former US president. In other states, such as Oregon, cases revolving around the current Republican frontrunner's eligibility are still pending. A US Supreme Court ruling on the issue of Mr. Trump's eligibility would be binding nationwide. SpaceX has been accused of unlawfully firing eight workers who were critical of its multi-billionaire chief executive, Elon Musk. A complaint by a US labour agency says the employee sent an open letter to the firm's executives in 2022 detailing workplace concerns. The letter called him a distraction and embarrassment, according to Reuters news agency. The complaint by a regional official at the National Labour Relations Board accused SpaceX of violating the workers' rights under federal labour law which allows co-workers to jointly advocate for better working conditions. The complaint also said those involved in the open letter were interrogated before being discharged. Lawyers for one of the former employees, Deborah Lawrence, have reportedly accused SpaceX of having a toxic culture where harassment is tolerated. Damn. While some believe that the King of Rock may celebrate his 89th birthday next week, propped up the bar of the Heartbreak Hotel, I don't get that. Are they trying to say that Elvis is still alive? Is that trying to be funny on that old conspiracy theory? Anyway, the rest of us will have to make do with an Elvis Presley hologram show in 2024. Ah. Elvis evolution an immersive concert experience using ai and holographic projection will premiere in london in november with shows also planned in las vegas tokyo and berlin the technology will create a life-size digital elvis from thousands of his personal photos and home video footage i wonder will it be fat elvis or thin elvis who cares? Oh, Cliff Richard will, <laughs> the fat phobe. The hologram will perform in a celebration of the star's life and musical legacy after a deal between Authentic Brands Group, the owners of the Elvis Presley estate, and Layered Reality, a British immersive entertainment company. The show will also offer a after-party Elvis-themed bar and restaurant on site at the central London location with live music, DJs and performances. The initiative follows the remarkable success of ABBA Voyage, a show in which life-size avatars of the four members of the Swedish pop group perform as their human counterparts appeared in 1979 in a purpose-built arena in East London. Oh, that's today's news. Ha, 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 ha.